What's up guys, this is The Honest Outlaw here, and today we're gonna to be talking about the Sig Sauer X Compact. Before I do that, I wanna mention my patient supporters. Thank you guys very much. Because of you guys, the channel's still here. Can't thank you enough for that. Because of that, we do exclusive content over on the patron page. Not only do we do exclusive videos, but we also try to answer all your questions, and we also try to involve you in the video making process a little bit. A lot of times when I have top fives, top tens, stuff like that, I like to get a little bit of viewer input, and that's where I go to get it. Also in that description is a link to a local youth shelter in Ames, Iowa that I like to support. Uh, those kids get really interested support now more than ever. Now the Sig Sauer X Compact is a pretty interesting little upgrade. The X series is kind of an upgrade from the original design. Now the X Compact does have the original modular design of the P320, whereas you can take the chassis system out and put it in any other gun or any other module and slide combination, which makes it pretty unique overall, which we'll get into the pros of that a little bit later. The SIG X Compact is a nine millimeter striker fired polymer frame pistol. It has a 3.6 inch barrel, making it a little bit shorter than the average gun that comes in the compact line, which helps it out as far as carry goes. It also only weighs 25 ounces, making it one of the lightest uh, SIG pistols out there. Uh, traditionally, I think the SIG P320 compact line goes around 28, 28 ounces or so. They're a little bit heavier because of the actual uh, module inside. But this one is running right around Glock 19 size, making it very light and very easy to carry. Uh, as far as the upgraded features on the X-Series goes, you're going to see here, first off, this gun is kind of dirty. Uh, we were out shooting it the other day, and uh, like I said, when I do 1,000-round reviews on guns, we really do 1,000 rounds. Handles pretty good, though. Mm-hmm. The X-Series has an upgraded uh, grip module to it, which I really like. Uh, it has a cutout here, which makes you able to get a little bit higher on the gun. The beaver tails cut a little bit, allowing you to get a little bit higher on the gun and negate that big old school bus on top there that they call a bore axis that they use for striker-fired guns on SIGs. A straight-in trigger there, which helps out a lot, actually. I do like that trigger more than I do something like the M18 or the standard 320. And the trigger is pretty nice as well, which we'll get into in the accuracy portion. Serrations on the front of the trigger guard, full Picatinny rail, front and rear serrations. It's got a plate on the top there for the uh, Sig Romeo and the Delta Point. Now that's kind of nice. I like that it comes with a red dot mount and that was pretty cool a few years ago. However, now you got to catch up with all the cool kids and you got to include some other plates as well. Guns like the Canic, guns like the P10 and uh, Glock MOS system, they'll come with multiple plates that include, I don't know, a Trigicon plate or maybe a uh, Bushnell plate or something like that. So sadly, even though it does have an optics plate, it can't take the uh, standard array of optics that a lot of other optics ready pistols can. So that's kind of a downside. Comes with upgraded sights. These are the SIG X-Ray sights, I believe. And these are the same or very similar sights that come on the M18 uh, that I reviewed a few months ago. And if uh, you don't remember, I don't love the outside ears. It does make the sights more durable. However, uh, I'm not in love with the actual sight picture itself, but the upgrade is that little uh, green golf ball you see at the end there. Uh, that huge high def tritium uh, front sight there is easy to pick up. And overall, not a bad sighting setup if you can get used to it. We're at 50 yards here with the uh, SIG Compact, the X Compact. And we got about a 15 mile an hour crosswind but that shouldn't be an issue. Maybe it will be. The magazine release is extended and is swappable for ambi controls. The slide release is also ambi, so overall a pretty good gun for left-handed shooters. The texture isn't bad, but isn't real great either. Nothing to write home about. I would say it's pretty average overall. They don't come with any back straps to make the gun larger. The SIG series doesn't. Uh, you can go to their website and pick up a bunch of different modules, however, to set this gun in. So instead of coming equipped with actual back straps, you gotta go to SIG's 
website and buy a module. So that's kind of a downside. However, you might find one that might fit you overall a little bit better than a set of back straps would. So it's really up to you whether or not that's a pro or a con. This gun comes with two 15 round magazines and a nitron finish, which I do consider pretty excellent. Uh, as you can see here, there's a little bit of wear on it, but not too much overall. And considering uh, the abuse this gun's received, it seems to be moving right along. Now, what would you use the X-Compact for? Well, I would personally use it for concealed carry. Uh, if I was looking for a all around gun, oh, this would it. be something I would consider for sure, considering the size and weight. It's small enough for carry, but big enough to use for a home defense gun. On top of that, that it does have a light rail. So if you had something like an Olight Valkyrie, for example, that has a cutie mount to it, you could carry this gun all day fairly comfortable with no uh, light on it. And then when you got home, you could uh, cutie snap a light on it. Uh, even the uh, TLR series or the X300, all of them you could slide on and slide off uh, whenever you needed to. That way at night you could have a gun with a weapon light and during the day you could carry it a little bit more comfortable. So I think it would flex into a home defense gun very well also. So if you were looking for just one gun, this would be a really good size to consider. A little bit too small for a competition gun though, but one of the unique things about the modularity of the SIG 320 is that you know, you could just pop this out and when you wanted it to, you could pop it into a larger module and you could throw a five inch slide on this guy. If you were sitting in a state like California or New York, for example, where the wait times can be so bad that you might actually die of old age, it might be beneficial for you just to buy one gun and have a bunch of slides and frames that you can order that make it uniquely available for a lot of people in states that couldn't otherwise have. Now we'll get into the reliability of the pistol and I wish it was a little bit better, but it is what it is. We had two failures in the first hundred rounds and we had no issues after that. Now that seems to be pretty standard with SIG pistols also. And I think the reason for that is, is because unlike companies like CZ, they don't break in their pistols right in the factory, so they have you do it. And usually after the first couple hundred rounds, the pistols get broken in, and uh, overall it runs fairly well. And in that we saw this also. I think that was a similar issue with the M18, and I don't know if the M17 had any problems, but I've seen that in several SIGs, and now I've seen it in this one. And to me, that's got to be what it is, because after the first shots video where we had those two failures, I didn't have any issues with uh, Pine Valley 94 grain frangible. We ran uh, Fiocchi 115, American Eagle 115, and Cellar and Belt 124. We didn't run any uh, carry ammo in this, sorry about that, but ammo prices being what they are, Another reason why we could be having reliability issues with SIG pistols lately is because of just the quality control issues that SIG is having over the past few years. If you don't know anything about SIG, they've been a pretty big company for a long time. However, in the past few years, they've blown up considerably. Uh, first off, they had the P365, uh, which was, I think, the most popular gun of the last five years. It's certainly the most popular handgun. And uh, really blew up the market and really increased production over there at SIG. On top of that, they gained the military contract with the 320 and ramped up production like crazy there as well. And if you're ramping up production uh, to an excessive amount, what usually uh, leaves you is quality control. And I've seen that on a few SIGs as of late. So they do have a pretty quality track record for the most part but as of late there's quite a few falling through the track although though still with a thousand rounds and only two failures and that being in the first hundred rounds I would consider this gun overall a very reliable pistol now we'll get an accuracy I always have to learn how to shoot 320s. Every time I get to a 320, for some reason, I have to learn how to shoot it. I can pick up a $250 saw and I can hit it 100 yards, but every time I pick up a 320, I have to kind of deal with its unique feel. But they are a fairly quality gun and I just have to learn how to shoot the pistol. I've had issues with accuracy with the X5, I had issues with the M17, the M18, and I had some issues with this, although I was more than accurate enough, especially at close range, to make it a an effective pistol, that leads me to believe a lot of the accuracy issues are my fault. I can be a fairly proficient shooter, but I do have my favorites. An issue I have with the pistol is the sights. And I considered putting a uh, red dot on this, however, I don't have currently a Romeo sight or a Delta Point, so I wasn't, I didn't have the available sights necessary to put it on to try it out. So I, I made the sights work and we got her done. I could still hit at 80 yards pretty easily. I just have to aim up a little bit because I always seem to hit low with SIG pistols. And I hear that's fairly common because I, I see a lot of that in the comment section. 
However, for most people, uh, the sights are of excellent quality and they are easy to pick up and the trigger certainly isn't bad. I wouldn't say it's like Beretta 92X performance good, but it's pretty good. I mean, especially compared to polymer frame pistols pre like 2010, uh, it's pretty good. Certainly an upgrade from the standard 320, especially with that flat face, and I do really like it. Uh, overall, though, the trigger is pretty quick. So even though we had some accuracy issues, and like I said, not that bad, uh, I had some issues grouping up close and stuff like that, but we could still hit it 50 yards all day long. The speed of the pistol was a little bit better than the M18, and I'll tell you why. Uh, first off, the grip. You can get higher on the grip and it feels a little bit better. And secondly, the trigger just has a little bit shorter reset and it's a little bit easier and a little bit uh, quicker to get on the trigger and get up close and drop rounds out quickly, which I consider to be an extremely important attribute of a carry gun because if you're going to get in a uh, fight with your pistol, it's probably not gonna be at 70 yards. It's probably gonna be close, dirty, and quick at 10 yards yards and in. Go. Now, I do feel the pistol rocking in my hand a little bit, which we talk about a lot. Uh, because the axis is so high, and especially because now the slide is shorter and the grip is shorter, I have less to wrench onto and hold that pistol in place. The gun is a little bit more snappy than usual, but because it has that textured uh, thumb ramp and because you can get higher and a little bit more aggressive on the pistol, uh, I even... I have a tendency to push down on the slide release as well. You can really grip down and hold that pistol in place and shoot fairly accurately. You're not gonna be able to get as fast as something like a P10C that has just better ergonomics and a lower slide, or something like a Canik TP9 uh, that has a quicker trigger, but still pretty good for what it is. That's a very nice sweatshirt you have there. <laughs> Let me know what you think of the X-Compact in this wind. Did a hell of a lot better with that than you did the Springfield Hellcat. Yeah, I wasn't vibing with that one. You like that one? It's all right. Now the aftermarket, I think, is where the SIG pistols really shine. Similar to like the Glock Gen 2, Gen 3, I even Gen 4 pistols before they started actually adding some of the accessories people have been asking for for years. Uh, the, three, the 320 series is extremely modular. You can drop these in a flux defense brace, which are super cool. Uh, you can put these in different pistols of different sizes. You can change the slide length. You can change the grip length. These things are so modular, it makes them very unique and very interesting. And that's why I think a lot of people keep coming back to the 320 because it's not the gun that you buy out of the box, but it's the gun that you decide to make yourself after you buy it. On top of that, holsters and magazines are gonna be readily available in every store that you have to look. So overall, if you're looking for a gun that you can just source parts and source accessories, the 320 is right up there with the Glock these days. I got my gun for around $575, and at that price, I would consider it a pretty good buy. Problem with that is I have looked at prices lately and you can't find these guns for less than $800 now. At that price, I think I'll probably pass. So do I think it's worth the money? Well, that's up to you. Uh, a lot of people really like SIG guns and I respect that. A lot of people like the grip angle. A lot of people like how it feels. If you're one of those guys, you can shoot the gun well. Don't listen to me. Just go out and shoot your gun. But if you're in the market for a new pistol, and you picked one of these up and it kind of feels like a blocky mess, like it feels to me, you pass on this gun. That's just my personal opinion. I think it's an upgrade from the standard 320, but at the end of the day, it's still a 320. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelters and remember to recycle. I'll check you later. You ready? You are on. Well done. I was playing the outlaw. <laughs> yeah, you're doing a really good job of it. I also messed up my sweatshirt already. How'd you do that? Well, 
the things flying back at me. The rounds, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure you'll survive. Sometimes I call them things. I don't know. You, sh <laughs> you shot that really well. I appear to have done so, yes. Okay, well, that, that's going to get cut. 